of sunshine in the forecast as we head into tomorrow. And I'll have more on that ahead. Eyewitness News at 6 starts now. This is Eyewitness <laughs> News at 6 on WUTR. Tonight's top stories at 6. State police have charged a man with vehicular manslaughter in relation with a fatal accident this past July. We'll bring you an update. And Governor Kathy Hochul has signed new legislation regarding gift cards purchased in New York State. We'll bring you all the details. Plus, Coming up tonight, I'll have more details on one Supreme Court case that has the potential to change federal election rules. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for Eyewitness News at 6. I'm Shelby Pay. Earlier this week, the Supreme Court heard a redistrict redistricting case from North Carolina that could impact federal election rules. Eyewitness News reporter Lauren Brill spoke with former congressman and lawyer Michael R. Curry to learn more. On Wednesday, the Supreme Court heard Moore v. Harper, a redistricting case from North Carolina that could have an impact on federal election rules. Former Congressman Michael R. Curie breaks down the initial case. What happened was the legislature said, we want to set up election districts this way. The way they set the election districts up there, even if there were a 50-50 vote between the two parties, 10 seats would become Republican and four seats would become Democrats. So, it was, it was pretty much determined that that was unfair, but that's what the, legislate, the state legislature passed. So it went into the state courts. The Supreme Court of North Carolina said, this is not fair, this is not right, we're setting the districts aside. Well, what the uh, legislature did in North Carolina is they appealed it to the Supreme Court, and they said, based upon Article I of the Constitution, state legislatures have the right to set the time, manner, and place of elections for Congress. And now the court has to decide. Can a legislator that makes a finding in respect to election districts for Congress then be reviewed by state courts? But it could have really profound implications on not only how election districts are picked in states like New York that are heavily, tend to be heavily Democratic, or states like North Carolina that tend to be Republican, not only on that, but also with electors to the Electoral College. Our Curie explains that the main concern surrounding this case is it leads to a constitutional dilemma. So I, I think the court, as it has in the past, will have a really solid debate on it, talk about it. Maybe they'll write, maybe a couple of the judges will write a really good dissent sort of exploring the issue, but I don't see them changing, um, uh, changing the way we've done things for 233 years. And a decision from the court is expected by the end of June. Reporting for Eyewitness News, I'm Lauren Brill. Also in recent local news, state police have charged a man with vehicular manslaughter in relation with a fatal accident that happened this past July. 22-year-old Brian Kreisman of Fort Plain has been charged with second-degree vehicular manslaughter, a felony, and a misdemeanor DWI. The crash occurred July 23rd in the Otsego County town of Pittsfield. Peyton Sterone of Mount Vision was a passenger in the car Christman was driving, and unfortunately, Sterone was pronounced deceased at the scene. And in other news, Governor Kathy Hochul signed legislation to prevent gift cards from declining in value over time, right as the holiday season kicks off. Several New Yorkers would rather give gift cards or gift certificates to friends and family instead of a traditional gift. And the good news is Governor Hochul has your back. Our Eyewitness News reporter Vera Shang has the details. The law prohibits gift card fees and limits expiration dates so that consumers can enjoy the full value of the gifts that they received. Today, Governor Hoko signed the legislation protecting customers from exploitative gift card practice goes into effect. Any gift cards or gift certificates purchased in New York State on or after December 10, 2022 will remain valid for a minimum of nine years from the date of purchase. And when the remaining value of a gift card or gift certificate is less than $5, the recipient can opt to receive cash for the balance. All fees are prohibited under the new law, which will prevent gift cards and gift certificates from declining in value. The law specifically forbids the imposition of any activation fees, 
retroactive fees, redemption fees, service fees, or any other fee of any kind. New Yorkers can rest assured that gift cards and gift certificates will not dwindle and diminish in value due to miscellaneous fees. Also, it is always helpful to keep in mind some tips when buying and using gift cards this holiday season. Verify the legitimacy of the seller before purchase. Make sure the packaging and security cells are intact. Use caution when buying gift cards from third parties. Review the terms and conditions. Be aware of scammers from prepaid cards and etc. Reporting Utica via Shang Eyewitness News. Be sure to get our CNY homepage app to stay up to date on all the latest local news. But before we go to break, here's a preview of your weather with meteorologist Dan Mazlowski. We have sunshine tomorrow with some snow showers in the forecast on Sunday. I'll break it all down for you in your local forecast next. Your eyewitness weather forecast. Good evening, meteorologist Santa Masowski here through checking on the weather. We're looking at a time lapse of downtown Utica throughout the day today. We started off with those temperatures in the 20s and we managed to get into the 30s during the afternoon hours with mainly sunny skies throughout the day. Now for current conditions, we're sitting at 29 degrees and we do just have a light breeze out of the north at seven miles per hour there. Now on current satellite and radar, even though we're dry here in central New York, we have our next system off to the west that's gonna be bringing in snow showers here in central New York as we head into Sunday. Though for tonight, mainly clear skies. We'll see those low temperatures, very chilly in the teens and the lower 20s. We'll be at 18 degrees as a low temperature there in Old Forge, 19 in Utica, and 20 in Illion, Cooperstown, as well as Oneonta. Now for those high temperatures tomorrow, getting to the 30s and the lower 40s, 
So pretty similar to what we saw today. We'll be at 37 degrees as a high temperature there in Old Forge, 40 in Utica, 36 in Ilion as well as Cooperstown, and 39 in Oneonta. Now for the future cast moving it forward tonight, mainly clear skies as we head throughout the night into tomorrow morning. And plenty of sunshine is expected throughout the day on Saturday. We'll start to see some more clouds, however, building in throughout the night into Sunday with those snow showers starting to move in. And this will continue and persist as we head throughout the afternoon and evening hours with some heavier pockets of snow expected at times, as you can see here, future cast picking up on those darker blue colors denoting that heavier snowfall. Now when all is said and done, as we head throughout Sunday into Monday morning, we're looking at around one to four inches of snow across the board here in central New York. Though as we head throughout the day on Monday, it looks like most of that snow will be melting. Now to recap for tonight, we'll have mainly clear skies, just a light breeze, as well as those low temperatures, very chilly dropping down to the teens. Now as we head tomorrow, we'll see plenty of sunshine throughout the day. A light breeze out of the south at five to 10 miles per hour, as well as those high temperatures getting into the lower 40s. Now for your seven day forecast as we head into tomorrow night, low temperatures dropping down to the upper 20s. And like I said before, we'll see those snow showers as we hit Sunday with temperatures in the mid 30s there. As we hit Monday, we'll have mostly sunny skies and sunny as we head into Tuesday as well. So drier as we hit the start of next week. Now we will start to see some more clouds, however, as we hit the middle of next week on Wednesday. Partly cloudy there, and we'll continue to see a mix of clouds and sunshine as we head towards the end of the seven day forecast and the end of next week on Thursday and Friday with high temperatures in the mid 30s. Thanks, Dan. Not too bad before it gets super chilly. Yep, definitely. <laughs> Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on News Nation. Tonight on Banfield, a mysterious black SUV, a scream in the middle of the night. Did police follow up on alarming details the night four college kids were murdered? Did they even know about the open door? We're pressing for answers tonight on Banfield. Catch News Nation every night beginning at 7 o'clock on these local stations. We'll be right back.
You're watching Eyewitness News at 6 on WUTR. Governor Kathy Hochul announced the start of construction work on what she calls the Smart Path, which is the rebuild of high voltage power transmission lines that will move through parts of the North Country and Central New York. The brunt of the work will be to replace old wooden poles that carry power transmission lines from the St. Lawrence Seaway near Messina down to Krogan in Lewis County. The old wooden H frames will be replaced by single metal poles that will rise twice the height of the existing setup. And the distance covered by the Messina to Krogan line is 45 miles. Following that, there will be work on the 55 mile line that runs from Krogan to Marcy. Ultimately, that will create a new 345 kilovolt transmission corridor from Messina to Marcy. Work on the project is expected to be completed by 2025. And a new law will now allow propane suppliers to fill propane tanks for people who are not their customers in emergency situations. As Capitol correspondent Jamie DeLine tells us, not everyone is completely happy with the new law. After years of complaints from Capital Region residents having issues getting their propane tanks refilled during the cold winter months, Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara sponsored legislation which would allow homeowners to get deliveries from another propane supplier in times of emergencies. On Thursday, it became a new law. Under previous law, these, uh, these families, these homeowners were limited to one single supplier. Whether they could deliver or not, they were just stuck waiting, sometimes for weeks. Uh, and as you know, during the coldest months of the year, uh, some of these calls came in there in February, uh, they had no options to keep the heat on. The law requires emergency propane providers to complete safety inspections and testing before the tank is filled, prohibits additional fees and penalties for service, and requires the Attorney General's Office and State Department of Agriculture and Markets to create a propane consumer bill of rights. Bill Overbaugh, executive director of the New York Propane Gas Association, says the law falls short. It fails to define what an emergency situation is. And second, it fails to protect a propane dealer's investment. And third, and most importantly, it fails to address any safety and liability issues. The association wants amendments, including the emergency supplier, to assume all responsibility for any problems that may result from improper filling or testing of the tank. When I asked about liability, Santa Barbara told me this. Aggie Markets will be uh, developing the regulations that's probably going to be underway shortly here uh, so that we can see those regulations when they come out and to make sure that things are done properly, to make sure that uh, all the specific procedures are in place who's responsible for what, when the supplies, when it can be accessed, uh, and how, the, how the, 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 new, the new regulations will work. The law goes into effect in April unless there is a qualifying emergency. In Albany, I'm Jamie DeLine. And now looking to national news. Unfortunately, hospitals around the country are filling up following the Thanksgiving holiday, which caused a spike in cases of COVID, the flu, and other respiratory illnesses. Washington correspondent Alexandra Limon reports on how the White House and health officials are pushing to prevent this from happening again after Christmas. First Lady Jill Biden and U.S. health officials have a message they say will ensure Americans have the best and healthiest holiday season. The most important thing you can do to prepare for your holidays is to get your updated COVID vaccine. Do it now. Don't waste any time. Go out there and protect yourself for the holiday season. Dr. Anthony Fauci, White House Chief Medical Advisor, says it's critically important for at-risk groups to get the latest COVID vaccines. But he says everyone, including kids, should stay up to date. There are almost 2,000 children who have died. There are 20,000 who have gotten hospitalization. And then there's long COVID. Dr. Ashish Jha, the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, says at this point in the pandemic, having only past versions of the vaccine isn't enough. The virus out there today is very different. And so that's why we need an update, uh, updated vaccine because it targets the virus that's out there. The second issue is that immunity can wane over time. During a virtual event Friday, the panel also took questions from AARP members. Kenneth from Washington State asked, will COVID ever go away? We can get on with our lives. We can do the things that matter to us if we do certain things. And that's keep up on the vaccination, 
get treated if you have an infection. Health officials say it's likely updated COVID vaccines will be needed on a yearly basis. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Still to come on Eyewitness News at 6, Utica City FC back on the pitch at the Adirondack Bank Center this weekend. Brendan Miller sat down with one of the fan favorites on the roster to talk about what fans can expect this season. Nims. Yeah, check, check. One, two, three. Mic check. One, two, three. Check. Check, check. Yep. Eyewitness Sports right now. Good evening, I'm Brennan Miller with Eyewitness Sports and earlier today I was joined by a very special guest in the studio, Utica City FC forward and last year's Major Arena Soccer League Joseph Kyrell Award winner Tim Goldman joined me to preview the UCFC season before their home opener this Sunday at 3 o'clock. Here is what he had to say. All right, well we're here with Eyewitness Sports. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brendan Miller sitting down with Utica City FC forward Tim Goldman. Tim, of course, also the MASL Joseph Kyrell Award winner from last year. That award, of course, stressing the heart uh, and, you know, being able to be a glue guy in the locker room for the team, along with some community uh, outreach and, of course, doing a little community outreach today, uh, talking to us about Utica FC's season, which has already begun, but the home opener uh, is this weekend on Sunday. So why should people come out and watch some games? Yeah, absolutely. Just first, it's, it's an absolute honor to, to be here with you today, Brennan. Um, we're back. We are yeah. back. Utica <laughs> City's back. Um, it's, it's a long off season, um, but we couldn't be more excited um, and grateful to play in front of our community again. Um, lots of, of new changes this year with a, with a new coach, a lot of new players, um, and a new practice facility in the Nexus Center as well. Um, so, so Rob Esch, you know, Tommy Tanner, our new coach, uh, Hewardson Marrera, are building something really special here in Utica um, and just an honor to be a part of it. Yeah, so you know, you're obviously a little familiar with the coaching ranks being uh, a head coach at Manlius Pebble Hill, where you, where you grew up and where you graduated from. So how has the adjustment been for Everton now being the new head coach um, with UCFC and, and you guys? Yeah, yeah, so we, we, I've known him in the past um, and he brings a wealth of, of knowledge mm -hmm. um, to our team and we're, we're really lucky and, and grateful to have him. Um, you know, his, his experience in the league um, and, and with futsal as well, um, it's, been, it's been really exciting learning under him, you know, for the last couple of weeks. Um, and he has us 
uh, ready to go for the season. So um, we, we can't wait for, obviously, our home opener um, Sunday at 3. Um, we're going to give it all for our, for our fans and our community. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned a little bit earlier the Nexus Center, obviously, um, the brand new facility. It's, and we've seen the videos of you guys and you know, the Utica Comets practicing next to one another, which is obviously a, a pretty cool visual. But yep. how has that been being able to use the new facility and you know, getting a little action where you actually, or next door to where you actually play games? Yeah, we're, we're home. We're home. Right. It, it is a absolutely world-class uh, facility. Obviously, everything is, is brain spanking new. Um, and it's, it's a quality pitch. Um, and the fact that we're here practicing in Utica, um, it, it just means more. Um, you know, our team is going to be more in the community. We're going to be more in schools. We're going to be more in the restaurants, in the grocery stores. And we're going to be able to do much more in the community. Um, so to be able to practice here in Utica, um, it's, a, it's a dream come true. Yeah, and so looking forward, Sunday obviously is your, your first game at the Adirondack Bank Center, 3 o'clock. Uh, you'll go into it with two games. Kind of the team will have two games under their belt. The first one uh, probably didn't go as well as you thought it would. It yep. would, but you know, still high scoring, still a lot of a lot of energy from the offensive end. Is that something that we can expect to see on Sunday? Um, and yeah. for people who are unfamiliar with, uh, you know, futsal or indoor soccer, why should they go to the games and what can they expect? Yeah. So absolutely, In indoor soccer is action packed. Yeah. Um, it's back and forth. Lots of goals, lots of shots, um, and the energy in the Adirondack Bank Center is, um, it's incredible. It's incredible. Our fans create a fantastic atmosphere, um, and it just, it, 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 it makes you want to give everything for the team. Um, so, you know, I've never met someone that's come to our game that hasn't had a good time. Um, so, anyone out there, uh, <laughs> Sunday at 3, uh, we're going to get the odd rocking. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming in and speaking with us. Again, Sunday at 3 o'clock, Utica City FC opens their home season at the Adirondack Bank Center, and you won't want to miss it. For now, that's all for Eyewitness Sports. I'm Brendan Miller. That's Tim Goldman, and we will continue the broadcast after the break. Tonight, Brittany Griner's homecoming. We never forgot about Brittany. And growing calls to bring Paul Whelan home from Russia. We've not forgotten about Paul Whelan. More Americans turn to the number one newscast on television, World News Tonight with David Muir.
Eyewitness News continues on WUTR. You know, I mean, I know some chilly weather is coming up, but that doesn't matter if you're going to see an indoor soccer game. No, and ironically enough, the team that UCFC will be playing on Sunday, the Harrisburg Heat. Unfortunately, oh. we're not going to have a ton of that over the weekend. Though. Love it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we're going to be seeing those chilly temperatures as well as some snow showers. So taking one last look at the seven day forecast, we have snow showers on Sunday around one to four inches. Then most of it will melt as we head into Monday as well with mainly sunny skies. Sunny on Tuesday as well. Temperatures very chilly though in the mid 30s. Now as we hit the middle of next week, we'll start to see some more clouds. So a mix of clouds and sunshine on Wednesday, Thursday as well as Friday. And we'll also see those temperatures still in the mid 30s with our low temperatures for most of the seven day forecast dropping into the 20s as well. So it will be quite a chilly week ahead. Perfect. Sounds great. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Brennan. And thank you for tuning in tonight. That's all for Eyewitness News at 6. ABC World News tonight is next. We'll see you back here again next week. This is Eyewitness News This Morning. Looking to national news, unfortunately, hospitals around the country are filling up following the Thanksgiving holiday, which caused a spike in cases of COVID, the flu, and other respiratory illnesses. Washington correspondent Alexander Limon reports on how the White House and health officials are pushing to prevent this from happening again after Christmas. First Lady Jill Biden and U.S. health officials have a message they say will ensure Americans have the best and healthiest holiday season. The most important thing you can do to prepare for your holidays is to get your updated COVID vaccine. Do it now. Don't waste any time. Go out there and protect yourself for the holiday season. Dr. Anthony Fauci, White House Chief Medical Advisor, says it's critically important for at-risk groups to get the latest COVID vaccines. But he says everyone, including kids, should stay up to date. There are almost 2,000 children who have died. There are 20,000 who have gotten hospitalization. And then there's long COVID. Dr. Ashish Jha, the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, says at this point in the pandemic, having only past versions of the vaccine isn't enough. The virus out there today is very different. And so that's why we need an update, uh, updated vaccine because it targets the virus that's out there. The second issue is that immunity can wane over time. During a virtual event Friday, the panel also took questions from AARP members. Kenneth from Washington State asked, will COVID ever go away? We can get on with our lives. We can do the things that matter to us if we do certain things. And that's keep up on the vaccination. Get treated if you have an infection. Health officials say it's likely updated COVID vaccines will be needed on a yearly basis. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Tune in to Eyewitness News at 6 on WUTR.
This is Eyewitness News This Morning. A new law will now allow propane suppliers to fill propane tanks for people who are not their customers in emergency situations. As Capitol correspondent Jamie DeLine tells us, not everyone is completely happy with the law. After years of complaints from Capital Region residents having issues getting their propane tanks refilled during the cold winter months, Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara sponsored legislation which would allow This is Eyewitness News This Morning. A new law will now allow propane suppliers to fill propane tanks for people who are not their customers in emergency situations. As Capitol correspondent Jamie DeLine tells us, not everyone is completely happy with the new law. After years of complaints from Capital Region residents having issues getting their propane tanks refilled during the cold winter months, Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara sponsored legislation which would allow homeowners to get deliveries from another propane supplier in times of emergencies. On Thursday, it became a new law. Under previous law, these, uh, these families, these homeowners were limited to one single supplier. Whether they could deliver or not, they were just stuck waiting, sometimes for weeks. Uh, and as you know, during the coldest months of the year, uh, some of these calls came in there in February, uh, they had no options to keep the heat on. The law requires emergency propane providers to complete safety inspections and testing before the tank is filled, prohibits additional fees and penalties for service, and requires the Attorney General's Office and State Department of Agriculture and Markets to create a propane consumer bill of rights. Bill Overbaugh, Executive Director of the New York Propane Gas Association, says the law falls short. It fails to define what an emergency situation is, and second, it fails to protect a propane dealer's investment. And third, and most importantly, it fails to address any safety and liability issues. The association wants amendments, including the emergency supplier, to assume all responsibility for any problems that may result from improper filling or testing of the tank. When I asked about liability, Santa Barbara told me this. Ag and Markets will be uh, developing the regulations that's probably going to be underway shortly here uh, so that we can see those regulations when they come out and to make sure that things are done properly, to make sure that uh, all the specific procedures are in place who's responsible for what, when this applies, when it can be accessed, uh, and how, the, how the, 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 new, the new regulations will work. The law goes into effect in April unless there is a qualifying emergency. In Albany, I'm Jamie DeLine. We'll have more eyewitness news after the break. This is Eyewitness News This Morning. Governor Kathy Hochul announced the start of construction work on what she calls the Smart Path, which is the rebuild of high voltage power transmission lines that will move through parts of the North Country and Central New York. The brunt of the work will be to replace old wooden poles that carry power transmission lines from the St. Lawrence Seaway near Messina down to Krogan in Lewis County. The old wooden H frames will be replaced by single metal poles that will rise twice the height of the existing setup. And the distance covered by Messina to Krogan is 45 miles. Following that, there will be work on the 55 mile line that runs from Krogan to Marcy. Ultimately, that will create a new 345 kilovolt transmission corridor from Messina to Marcy. Work on the project is expected to be completed by 2025. And we'll have more eyewitness news after the break. This is Eyewitness News This Morning. And now, looking to recent local news, the state police have charged a man with vehicular manslaughter 
in relation with a fatal accident this past July. 22-year-old Brian Kreisman of Fort Plain has been charged with second-degree vehicular manslaughter, which is a felony, and a misdemeanor DWI. The crash occurred July 23rd in the Otsego County of Pittsfield. Peyton Sterone of Mount Vision was a passenger in the car Kreisman was driving, and unfortunately, Sterone was pronounced deceased at the scene. And for your complete weather forecast and the latest local news and sports, be sure to tune in to Eyewitness News at 6 every night right here on WUTR. We'll see you there.